This video demonstrates how to use Google Sheets to generate a grouped frequency table. That's a frequency table when the data covers quite a wide range, so rather than recording individual frequencies, we're going to record frequencies of a, a group of data points altogether. Um, the techniques here work in other spreadsheets as well, and there's a few differences which I'll point out on the way. Um, OK, we have a set of data here. We've got uh, 60 data points there. Uh, these are the results of a group of 60 students in a test marked out of 100. Um, normally you would have these data values in a single column probably. Um, I've put them in a table here just for ease so that we can see them all. It makes it a little bit easier to work with. Um, the, the techniques work exactly the same whichever method you use. Um, OK, the first thing we need to do is to set the boundaries of our groups and we're going to use um, class widths of 20. So we're going to go from uh, 1 to 20, 21 to 40 and so on. So I'll set them here. So I'll set the um, lower bound as 1 and the upper bound as 20 um, and then I'm going to go 21 and 40. Now I'm going to keep going up in 20 so there's a slightly easier way to do that rather than type them all in. I'll just do equals for a formula uh, the one above and then plus 20 and I can drag fill that formula across and then just drag down until I get my table. So there are my table of values. Now we need to do these separately. That's not normally how you would lay out the frequency table um, but we do need to do these separately because you're going to see later on we're going to use these in a calculation. Normally we would say though um, 1 to 20 or have some sort of way of uh, recording that and we can do that here in this column I've labeled interval um, and we want to go from 1 to 20. Now we can use a function here called concatenate so we'll type equals to start typing a function and if I start typing concat um, you'll see that we get concatenate appends strings to one another and we're going to use that one. Uh, concat just does two values. Um, we're going to use three um, you might think it's only two, but we'll see why it's three in a moment. So we'll click on concatenate. Um, string one is the number one. We'll put a comma in, and for uh, tidiness, we'll leave a space, and then double quotes the word two and another space, comma, and then the upper bound. Close the brackets and hit enter. And there you go, we've got that as a text, and we can drag fill that down to get our totals from 1 to 100, up 1 to 20, 21 to 40 and so on. And that concatenate function is also available in Microsoft Excel. So having set our table up, we now need to calculate the frequencies. In a simple frequency table, we use the count if function because we were just testing on one criterion, was the number of or value a particular one single thing. Um, for a group table, we've got to test two things. We've got to test whether the number is greater than or equal to 1 and less than or equal to 20, for example, in our first class interval. So we're going to use a function that's similar, but it's called count if with an S on the end. I missed out an I there. Um, count if. So it's a plural. It says count values depending on multiple criteria. We can actually put multiple criteria. We can put as many criteria in here as we like. Um, so we're going to open the brackets. Um, and what we do, we put these things, just like in count if, we put these things in in pairs. We put the range and then the criterion. So our range of data uh, is the table. Now if we press F4 on a PC, I don't know what it is on a Mac, uh, if we press F4 we'll get our dollar signs there. That means that when we copy this formula those values won't change at all. We'll stick with those values. Um, and the first criterion we're looking for is that it has to be greater than or equal to 1. And we do this using the quotes. We have to put this in as an expression with quotes. The greater than sign, which you'll find bottom right of your keyboard, equals and 1. You could do greater than 0 if you like, but you'll see why I'm going for greater than or equals to 1. So that's our first criterion. Then we put a comma. Reselect the data. We have to select the data again. There is a good reason for that because you might not always want the same range. Um, we'll put the dollar signs in to stop it from changing when we copy. And then our second criterion is less than or equal to 20. And we'll close the quotes, close the brackets, hit enter, and there we go, it tells us we've got one student in that category, and there's that student with a score of 7. OK, having completed the formula once, we can drag fill down. Now the trouble is, of course, it's checking that they are all between 1 and 20, so we need to change these. We'll change that one to 21 and 40, 
and we should find a different answer. There we go, we should find 5, and we'll change this one to 41 and 60, and we've got 9 of those, 61 and 80, and finally 81 and 100, and there are the results of our students. Just to check that, we will total those up, so we'll put a total in at the bottom, and we'll do equals sum, sum is the formula for adding them up, click and drag, close the brackets, and there we go, and there's our total of 60 students. OK, you have your frequency table now, and it, it worked OK, but you might be wondering why I said we should put these upper and lower bounds in as separate columns here, in column G and H. Um, we use them already to create these formulae, sorry, create these uh, text cells using concatenate, but there was another reason for doing it as well, because we could have typed those cells quite easily by hand, just as quickly as we typed these. The reason for doing that is that in generating these formulae, the count ifs formula, um, we've got the top one on the formula bar here. Um, we actually had to hard code in the 1 and the 20, and then we had to edit those for each row of the table. That didn't take too long, because we only have five rows in our table, so we only had to change four of them, and the numbers were quite straightforward. They went up in nice, easy groupings. However, there is a way we can change this formula, so we actually use the cell references, and we refer to these numbers, and that allows us to drag our formula down without having to change it. It's a little bit fiddly, so we'll go through it very slowly. Let's go back to our formula here. We've got greater than or equal to 1. We're actually going to say greater than or equal to this cell G3, which has the number 1, the lower bound. So if we go back up, we'll edit it in the formula bar. Instead of greater than or equal to 1, well, we don't type the G3 within the quotes. We have to type that outside the quotes, and we have to put the ampersand symbol in front of it. That's the Shift 7 is the ampersand, so we've got greater than or equal to, within double quotes, a space, and then and G3. Notice that there's no comma between them. And again we'll do the same here. Less than or equals, delete the 20, outside the quotes, put a space, but no comma, ampersand, H3. And there's our formula, and if we press enter, there's the result 1. We'll drag that down, Remember our results are 5, 9, 24 and 21. If we drag that down, there we go. The formula are exactly the same as they were before. Sorry, the results are exactly the same as they were before. Our total is 60, and if you look at the formulae, you can see that the cell references have changed as we've dragged down. So it started with G3 and H3, then it's gone G4, H4, G5, H5, and so on. And that's the more efficient way for a longer table, or a table with more... Um, complicated upper and lower bounds that it will take a little bit more time to type in.